The VDB Morph SDF is really cool because it gives you effects like this. I'm going to assume that you already understand what VDBs are. I'm going to assume that uh, you know what volumes are. And if you don't, then check out Houdini for the new artist too. But I want to show you how we can create these cool morph effects using this node. So let's go ahead and start with this first example here. I know this network looks a little complicated, but essentially I have a head that is a VDB. So here's a VDB from Polygons. We have about 675,000 voxels on this. And I've also cached out this shape down here, which exists inside the head. Now, the cool thing is that we just take these two SDF volumes, and all we need to do is use the VDB Morph SDF. Let's go ahead and take this, the first input, and the second input right here. And by default, we have something like this. Let's actually switch that so we start with the inside here and we morph into the head. There we go. So the first input is the source. So that's the shape that you start with. And the second input is going to be the shape that you want it to turn into. Up here, we have this time step. That time step is simply used to tell Houdini where you are in the morphing process. <laughs> So as I turn this to zero, we are completely at the initial shape. And as I turn this up, we start turning into the other shape. Now, as you can see, as we turn up that time step, it takes a little longer to think about this. And this leaves us with an issue because as we get further along in the morphing process, it takes a lot longer to calculate everything we need to get an accurate shape. So a much, much better way of doing this that'll save you lots of time is by using a SOP solver. With the SOP solver, all I'm doing in here is I'm saying, okay, input one, that's going to happen at frame number one. So we bring in that initial geometry. I don't think this switch is necessary, actually. I think you can just plug in the DOP import directly in. But just to be safe, I'd put a switch there. Uh, so we have that. And then after that, we just take the previous frame and we set that to the first input. Again, we have our VDB morph SDF, but this time our time step is set to a much lower value. That'll make each calculation much faster. And the nice thing about this is that as we get to the later stages of the morph, we're not having to think about every single step that led up to that shape every single time. We're just taking the previous frame and iterating on that previous frame. So this becomes much, much faster compared to just using an expression here on the time step, which by the way is what you have by default. So if we just revert this to defaults, you'll notice that we have one divided by frames per second, but that's a bad way of working. It's much better to use this solver. Anyway, that basically caches out until we have this morphing effect. More specifically on these parameters though, we have two main sections. So the morphing has to deal with how it pushes the SDF boundary outwards. And as you change the spatial scheme or the temporal scheme, the later options are slower, but more accurate. That's generally what you need to know about those algorithms. In the renormalization section underneath that, that is basically making the SDF volume clean so that the next time it goes to expand outwards and morph, that morph is working with something that's a clean SDF. So the idea is that it expands outwards and then it has to clean up that SDF and then it'll go ahead and expand outwards yet again. So it's expanding, cleaning, expanding, cleaning. It's a good way of thinking about what's happening here. This steps at three is usually pretty good, but if you notice that the quality of the mesh is just looking a little bit janky, you can turn up the steps. And like before, we have these algorithms down here to pick from, and the further down you choose, the more accurate but slow the algorithm becomes. Lastly, we have an alpha mask. If you want this to only happen in certain areas, you can do that through an alpha. 
But uh, in most cases, I don't think that's what you need. In case you do though, if you just want to morph one section of an SDF volume, you have that option of doing that with an alpha mask. But those are the main parameters. Now, let's uh, take a step back here and talk about what this is good for and what it's not good for. This is good for a situation where you have something small that needs to morph into something big. And so, you know, as an example, we had a mesh inside the head that had room to expand out and it hit the boundary of the head's VDB. That's really, really good. However, if let's say our initial shape was kind of not contained within the morph target, then it would not work quite as well. Let me show you an example of that real quick because there are certain situations where this will not work out. What I have over here is this axe, this little birdie axe. And on the other side, we have just a regular axe. If I template these two shapes, or let's just merge them so that we can see what they look like on top of each other, we end up with something like this. So in this situation, it's not like one shape really lives inside the other shape. There are two very different shapes. And the morph isn't going to work as well because of that fact. So as we go here to our solver, it's the same kind of deal that you saw before. We start with, let's say, the birdie axe, and we start trying to turn into the other axe, but you'll notice that it never really fully turns into that other axe. It just kind of caps out to the borders, let's say, of where the other axe was. So if I have this right here, and let's say that I template the old axe, it's not filling up this whole shape along here. And so again, if you're trying to use this method, it works best to have an initial shape inside the mesh and then expand outwards. If you have a very specific shape trying to turn into another very specific shape, it doesn't tend to work quite as well. And I know you guys are wondering about one last question on this. <laughs> Uh, what about textures? What about UVs? How can we texture an object that's morphing like this? Well, if you're thinking about UVs, from my knowledge and understanding, there's not really a great way of doing that, that I can think of. But if you're using triplanar projections and a noise slash masking workflow for the textures, then you might be able to figure out something that'll work but it definitely is a more advanced challenge for shading and texturing something. And in general, if you have to deal with a situation like this, I wouldn't recommend it on models or objects that require very specific kind of uh, detailed painting that requires UVs. It's just not going to work very well. And I think that uh, you'll find a lot of struggles if you try to rely on UVs for this morphing model. But anyway, that about does it for the VDB Morph SDF SOP. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com, where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.